Let's take a look at how to configure OBS to stream live to Periscope slash Twitter. Uh, as I explained before, Periscope is the company that Twitter purchased to um, get live streaming going, and now the two companies are kind of merging into one. And Periscope has a program called Periscope Producer. When I say program, I mean a program you can join. Um, and that, once you're in part of that program, you can live stream from sources other than your mobile phone, um, and, such as your desktop and OBS, and those streams, of course, will appear in your Twitter feed. So first and foremost, as always, we have already configured the scenes and sources just like before, just like in the previous video. Um, and of course, we're gonna need to go into the settings to configure uh, OBS. Now, this, this is probably the one that's gonna require the most amount of settings because <clears throat> as of the recording of this video, there is no live, there is no Twitter slash Periscope uh, streaming service preset. So we got, we're gonna have to go build it ourselves. Now, before we can even do any of that, you're gonna need to head over to your browser and you're gonna need to go to this URL. You're gonna need to go to t.co for twitter.company slash Periscope producer. Once you go there, that's actually a form that you can fill out um, because as of the recording of this video, Periscope producer isn't enabled on every Periscope account you actually have to um, sign up for it. So you basically fill out the form, uh, hit submit, it's pretty simple, they ask only a few questions, and then normally it takes them about one or two business days to get back to you, and, uh, and I have yet to see anyone that doesn't get approved, but basically they um, turn it on in your Periscope account. Now, speaking of which, you will need a Periscope account. Even though you can stream live uh, to Twitter from, um, uh, from a mobile app, in order to stream live to Twitter, you have to still go through Periscope again uh, from your desktop as of the recording of this video. Now, that could all change. You might be watching this sometime in the future where that all goes away and you can do it all through Twitter, but as it stands right now, you still have to do it through Periscope. So, you're gonna need your mobile phone for this. I've got my phone set up here and my phone is running the Periscope app. So that's actually where we're gonna start. When, uh, my account's already been approved, so we already passed that part. That's where we're gonna start to get the settings we need to put into OBS. So I'm in Periscope, and of course there are some live streams going on right now. If I tap at the very bottom on the right-hand side to get to uh, people, and in the um, upper right-hand corner, I can get to me. And when I go to get to me and I scroll all the way down, I can get to settings and they kind of bury this but if I go all the way down in settings then I can get to advanced sources now that advanced sources will only be there if your account has been approved to use Periscope producer once you go to advanced sources you can um, create a new source I created one already and I will delete this one after I record this video because this is, like I said before, this is giving away that top secret stream key. Um, and you can create and it will stay there until you change it. Or in my case, like I said, I'll delete this one and create a new one for use after this because I don't want anyone to have my secret stream key. So it doesn't matter if you copy this after the fact because I'm going to disable it. All right, so you're gonna need the two things. You're gonna need the server URL and you're gonna need the stream name, which is really the stream key as it says. Now we're gonna head back to OBS and we're gonna to go to settings and we're gonna to go to stream. And again, instead of a service that you're gonna pick like, you know, um, you know, Twitter or, or I'm sorry, um, YouTube or Facebook or Twitch, you're gonna actually use the custom streaming server. And actually, you know what? Let's cancel this real quick. Before we get started, there's one more thing you should do, and I've already done it, that's why I forgot. Under uh, profile, this would be a good time to create a new profile. And profiles are basically, think of them as um, names or, or uh, workspaces for your settings. So I've got one here called Periscope Twitter. That way, I don't have to keep typing this stuff in every single time I wanna stream on Twitter, versus Facebook, versus uh, whatever. So you can make profiles for the various streaming servers you're gonna be on, 
and I made one for Periscope Twitter. You make it before, because if you make it after, it doesn't copy all that stuff over unless you duplicate it. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, go to settings now. Let's go to stream. You're gonna choose custom server, and you're gonna put in that URL, the same one you got off your phone, and you can either type it, or if you're on iOS 10 and um, Mac OS Sierra, you can copy and paste between um, platforms. So you can copy and paste in your URL and then copy and paste in your stream key. So that's the stream key that I got from the um, advanced sources. All right, now once you've done that, you think you're done, but you're not because you gotta go make some other changes that since this is a custom streaming server, we have to make them to be specific to what um, Periscope slash Twitter is looking for. So first thing we'll do is go under output, we'll switch to advanced, and you're just going to basically duplicate what I've got here. It's already probably on X264. You're going to turn off the enforced streaming server encoder settings. You're going to change your CBR to 800 from whatever it's currently on. And you're going to um, change your keyframe interval to, from 0 to 2. If your CPS usage is on anything other than very fast, go ahead and switch it to very fast. The only other thing you need to change is over here in the audio you need to make sure all your tracks are set to no higher than 96 uh, bitrate. <clears throat> I believe it, uh, it defaults to a much higher one, and that will not work for uh, Twitter. So it needs to be on 96 or less. All right, so now that you've made those two settings under streaming and under audio, there's only one more you need to make, and that's under video. Uh, your base canvas resolution, you can keep that at 1080 or whatever your display is set at. So mine is at, at 1080, so I'm going to keep it at 1920 by 1080. But your output scaled resolution, now this is where you can you can go to 720p. You can make this 1270 by 720, but Periscope really only wants 960 by 540. So rather than have it complain, I'm going to give it what it wants. 960 by 540. It doesn't make that big of a difference anyway. Um, and of course, the 30 frames per second. That's it. If you made those three settings, so basically, or four settings if you count the stream key, your stream key, your URL, your output under streaming, and your output under audio, and then last but not least, set your video to 960 by 540, no matter what the base resolution is, you're good to go. Now at this point, you, if you're ready to stream, even though you're not gonna go live yet, you can go ahead and click start streaming. Uh, or not recording, streaming. All right, we're gonna hit start streaming. Okay, so now it is sending the data to Twitter slash Periscope. All right, so now if we head back to the phone, uh, if you've got everything set up right, you're gonna get a preview broadcast button. Your preview broadcast button will light up as mine just did. If you have any settings that are incorrect, it will give you a yellow warning above them. Now, yellow is okay. That usually means, well, it's higher than what we want, but we'll still let it go. Like, like I said, you can go all the way up to 720p. It will still let it happen. But um, I didn't want the warning, so I put everything in the way they recommend. Now, at this point, you tap the preview broadcast, and that will start to show you whatever's going on in your computer. So at that point, you're done with OBS. You can, don't quit it, just hide it and go back to whatever it is you're about to start presenting or demoing. So for example, if I switch layers here in Photoshop, turn that layer off, I should see my preview update. And that'll also show you the kind of lag you're gonna have uh, from what you're seeing on your computer screen to what they see in the live stream. So there's about a six or seven second lag there from the time I turn that layer on and off. All right, so now at this point, the only other thing you do on your phone is you put in your description, your title, whatever it's gonna be. Of course, my Twitter icon is already in a, enabled, so that means that when I hit go live, this will also tweet it out on my Twitter feed. And of course, um, once I hit go live, I still do everything from the phone as far as looking at the comments, looking at the chat, um, and stopping the broadcast when I'm done and seeing the hearts and all that. So you're going to use your phone to monitor the chat or your tablet. It could be a, a tablet as well. Um, your phone or your tablet to monitor the chat, to start the broadcast, to put in the title, to decide whether it's going to tweet out or not. And that's how to configure OBS to stream live on Twitter slash um, Periscope. 
So you're still going to do the is odd because you're not really streaming from the phone, but that's just the way Periscope slash Twitter works today. You're using your phone to control everything. All right. So with that said, thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.